What is open access? It's free online access to peer-reviewed research, and each of these components is uh, important in the definition. It is online access. It's, it's access to uh, text that is um, on the web and not to text that's on paper. It's important to understand that. You can print it out on paper, but open access doesn't refer to uh, printed materials. It refers to online materials only. Second of all, it doesn't refer to all texts. It refers only to, or primarily, to peer-reviewed research. Uh, there are many reasons why uh, open access doesn't apply itself as, uh, as directly and as um, uncomplicatedly to uh, other forms of literature as it does to peer-reviewed research literature. The reason is that uh, peer-reviewed research is written and always has been written only for the sake of being used and applied and um, built upon. It's never been written in order to be sold for royalty income or, to, or for a fee, the way books are. So uh, it's an exception-free domain. By exception-free, I mean there isn't a single author of a peer-reviewed peer research article who would prefer to be paid for access to his article rather than have his article uh, accessible to everyone for free. There are two and a half million articles published in the approximately 25,000 peer-reviewed journals um, in the planet. Peer review is critical here as well. We're not talking about putting raw research up on the web. We're talking about peer-reviewed articles and also peer-reviewed conference proceedings. As we all know, although this is not about the problem of journal affordability. Journals are expensive and uh, no university can aff afford access to all 25,000 journals. Most universities can only afford a small fraction of them and that means that their researchers um, don't have access to the rest. As a consequence of that lost access, um, the authors of the research that those researchers can't access are losing research impact. That research isn't being used and applied the way it could be if everyone could access it. So the authors are losing access, the users are losing, uh, pardon me, the authors are losing impact and the um, users are losing access. There are 20, uh, pardon me, there are um, two ways to provide open access. One of them is uh, called green open access and it's done by self-archiving the articles in those 25,000 journals on the web, simply placing them on the web freely accessible to everyone. What, what we're talking about today is green open access and it's very important not to confuse it with gold open access. Golden open access refers to the approximately 10 percent of those 25,000 journals that have converted to becoming open access journals. That means they themselves make all of their articles freely accessible on the web. Uh, most of them are conventional journals in the sense that they continue to have a paper edition as well as an online edition and they, many of them, most of them, uh, continue to charge for subscriptions but they make their only online uh, version freely accessible to all. They are, however, in the minority, 10% of journals, and in fact uh, except for a subset of them, uh, which which charges for um, charges for uh, charges the author's institution for publishing, except for that small sub subset, and that's uh, probably less than thirty percent of the ten percent, which means three percent of journals. Um, the journals are those golden access journals are not the highest impact and highest quality journals, as I say, with the exception of the three um, percent that charge. But uh, this meeting is not about uh, the, the open access journals, it's not about the golden road to open access, it's about the green road to open access and the reason we focus on the green road is that um, green open access can be mandated. You as rectors of universities can require your researchers to make their um, uh, research articles open access via green open access. You can require them to put it up on the web at no extra expense. You can't require them 
to publish in golden open access journals, not only are there not enough golden open access journals, but even if there were, and more of them, more of uh, conventional journals are now offering, offering golden open access as an alternative that you pay for, but the other reason you can't mandate that they should publish in those journals is not just that you can't choose their journals for them, but uh, you can't also require them to uh, pay extra money. Your university is already paying a great deal of publication charges. It's not the publication charges of your own uh, researchers, it's the publication charges of researchers at other institutions which you are buying in in the form of subscriptions. That's a bad model, but you can't convert that model as rectors directly. What you can do is you, convert, you can convert your researchers um, from, uh, from what they're doing now, which is 85% uh, of them are doing nothing about open access, to requiring all of them to provide green open access. Possibly, and I'm not here to talk about that now, possibly eventually green open access will lead to a mass conversion to golden open access. But from this point on, I will only be speaking about green open access, the only kind of open access that you're in a position to accelerate the arrival of, the provision of. Why open access? There are at least three reasons. Uh, the first and most important is to maximize the uptake, the usage, the applications, and the impact of the research output of your university. If you look at my transparency, you'll see a little slide there beside the open access why question. I hope um, that uh, other, con uh, other uh, my colleagues who will be presenting today will present this slide which shows the size of the open access citation advantage across all disciplines, all disciplines tested, and that includes natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities, all disciplines that um, provide open access uh, enjoy uh, at least 40 or 50 percent and sometimes as much as 250 percent or more advantage in citations. That's only one of the many measures of the advantage, but um, it's a strong one. And uh, the slide there will show you uh, how if you compare articles in the same journal, same issue, that are and are not green open access, uh, on average, the citations of the green open access articles are twice as large as the ones that are not open access. That is a huge increase in impact, considering that most articles aren't cited at all.